I know what you're thinking. You're probably thinking, what the hell's Ben up to this time? Well, this is something I built two years ago. And if you stick around, I think you'll find it quite interesting. And I'm going to explain what it is and how it works and how it'll help you, really, with your fault finder, especially on canvas, which a lot of people struggle with. So, let's crack on. About two years ago, I had the idea to make this tool. And then I just didn't, I didn't finish it, really which is a shame and what is it well it's a cam bus simulator and my idea although it's not really the best is it like this bit of bloody felt here i only i went to a guitar shop a music shop to get these jacks but they ended up being crap really to be honest so how does it work well what is it first of all well basically i made this wiring myself it's cam wiring so you have an 120 ohm resistor here you have one here and then gearshaft's law parallel your total line resistance is 60 ohms so my simulator is so we have a open simulation a short to ground shorter together branch line two branch line three main line and obviously i need to add some more functions onto it but it's i kind of like what i did it's pretty cool i made a logo and everything for it it's a bit dog-eared now i need to make some pieces of wood really for it so it's really good though because you can simulate what would happen in a car and then we can kind of the idea was that you can go onto these here with a multimeter and measure essentially what the signal looks like and how do we generate the signal well basically i got this i didn't even have a plug for it so i just soldered the wires direct to it i've got a fuel pump control module ekm gk pm3 that's broken but the cam bus signal it is it defaults to standby mode so when i power it here with a 12 volt power supply you'll get a 12 volt sort of output here in, in a sense. And I've not used this for two years. I've built it because I promised some people I was going to build it and they probably, kept, probably thought I couldn't do it. <laughs> so I did it. I even put legend branch line stub or node. And essentially that is, that is how it works. So yeah, I think I'll dust it off now and I'll fire it up and see if it still works basically. All right, so I've got the old scope set up here now. So let's fire it up. It still works. That's pretty funky, isn't it? Although it's not really a very pleasant GAN signal. In fact, it's bloody diabolical, actually, to be honest. It shouldn't really kind of look like that. It's a little bit iffy looking. Um, because, you know, it's an ad hoc tool what I made. I managed to get quite a reasonable pattern now. Now, these little peaks at the bottom, you see, these little, like, going up and down. That's bad grounding, is that? Because the cyst, it's made for the old maid. What do you want? Do you know what I mean? But listen, I can induce a couple of faults now. So let's uh, see what happens when both lines are shorted together. And this is what you'd see when you're troubleshooting. That's okay, and then that's shorted together. And then my favourite, short to ground on one of the branch lines. So one of the node lines. And that's what you'd see usually. That's uh, probably the can high, that one. It don't matter which one it is, but like you sometimes you have a can set of can lows okay, but the can high isn't. You could have just one line shorted, but still the result is the same. The can won't work, and that's the very typical pattern what you'll get that uh, strange pattern on the blue, you know. And then the last one I managed to do two years ago was an open circuit on the main line, so that's the whole can bus. You think a can bus, you've got the resistor there and resistor there, and in this case, DSC unit, and in this case, body module. I think it was an E60. Or maybe a bit, a bit newer than that. If the main line's shorted, none of the branch lines will work because there's no comms, there's no resistance. And we can check this with multimeters as well, but let's just induce an open. And there we are, you can see, you get like a kind of working, but it's not great, you know. You wouldn't get any comms on that signal. So, just a quick test of this too. What I'm showing you is how you check the circuit resistance on a CAN bus, but I'm doing something wrong. What am I doing wrong? Well, I've got the battery connected. So you can see we've got zero ohms on there. Uh, continuity to each other so the first thing we have to do when we check a bus system is we disconnect the power supply and that way we can get a true measurement without the bus being active without control units being powered up we recheck across the bus again and we should have 60 ohms meaning the whole bus is intact essentially that means the terminating resistors at both ends are working and functioning and that node whichever node that may be is working now of course if we have an issue and we don't have any communications with a node or a branch line to a control unit from the main line, then we can induce that fault and we can actually see what it looks like. And the first fault we're in, in, inducing there is when they're actually gonna be shorted together. 
and you're going to see some strange values for example three ohms you won't get a, the normal resistance value at all what you would normally get now the one you have to be really careful of is when you have a short to ground because although you'll see it on the scope when you connect the ohm meter you won't see it that top one there now that's an open circuit of course you've lost one resistor so you'll get nearly 120 ohms or as close to it as possible I hope you like that it's a good tool isn't it I need to develop it more yes I shop at Lidl I don't know who this is actually someone's left some crisper as well look. great isn't it so it's a good tool in that sense It's good because you can use a scope and see what the signal looks like under all of those different circumstances. And what I'm going to do is develop it a bit more. And maybe put a voltmeter, a little mini voltmeter on the screen so I don't have to have a separate, you know, meter. And I can just like hook it up, I don't know. I just don't have time, that's the problem. But um, yeah, let's see how it goes. Because it's getting quiet now, so there's not so many jobs. An hour, it's three o'clock now, an hour to go, and there's no work. I've done all my three jobs today. Anyway, have a good crimbo if I don't see you before then. And uh, thanks for following me. Nearly, we should get to 10,000, shouldn't we? I want 10,000 subscribers, and I can have a little shop on TikTok and sell all my products, apparently. If you like it, comment please and let me know what you think of my own made tool and what you want me to do to improve it. And uh, do I do a video for it and you know, stuff like that.